Welcome back. This is K24 this morning. A very interesting conversation here about the BBI uh, signature collection that is meant to be happening today at the key ICC. And this is our question of the day that uh, you are engaging us on currently. Do you understand the BBI report well enough to participate in the signature collection? Do you understand the BBI report well enough to participate in the signature collection? Let's see what you're saying on uh, our WhatsApp line. Good morning, Bovi. I don't at all. What I have seen, or rather what I've been seeing, is only the expanded executive. Believe you me, we are yet to see the document, and it will be very sad seeing politicians come to Mashinani to sensitize people on uh, matters BBI instead of delivering services. I personally won't vote a yes for it. By the way, I understand that whether we like it or not, there will be a referendum, and this refers to what Rao said that is uh, that it's somebody's choice. We know it won't be a choice. This is Ahmed from County 04. Okay, thank you very much, Ahmed, for your uh, response. Yes, as a beginning on the BBI issue, a number of Kenyans now have at least ideas uh, to it. Let the signature exercise begin as a mock exam. <laughs> it is allowed everyone freely to exercise his or her right as a citizen. Amendments later. This is Wilson Ngetich uh, from Bomet County. Thank you very much, uh, Ngetich. Yes, I have been reading it and so far so well understood. This is the change moment that we've been looking for for decades. BBI have uh, con con convenienced a scenario uh, of politicians or political goodwill which we've been lacking. All leaders that have always opposed to change that has been meant to help Mwananchi live in an economically and ethnically stabilized uh, atmosphere are now together. They might together for some of their selfish agendas, but it is still, or rather, it still has very good areas meant for our good as a nation, and we should seize the opportunity. This is Njenga Wakumo from Kehara. Thank you, Njenga. All right, uh, this is Ken Rotich saying the Secretariat and the team of experts was fully representative of the face of Kenya. Uh, uh, special interest and multi-sectorial. I am under 35 and I was in the technical experts team. All right, Rotich, thank you very much for that. Wow, okay, um, interesting uh, sentiments there. Helping me drive this conversation is Stephen Munesi, um, Mwakesi rather, Ruth Ambogo and Mark Bichachi. And I just, I just want to talk about the whole uh, situation whereby we're looking at this quest for signatures, uh, Stephen as something that may, might you know, make or break this country. We can see some of the sentiments actually on WhatsApp. Some people are saying they will give it a yes. Others are saying they do not care. They will not even vote for it because they have not read it. What does this mean in regards to national unity? Uh, thank you for that question, Bovi. You know, the thing that happened the moment the draft bill was put in the report, Kenyans went through it. And people saw that the one thing that will be fundamental to their existence as a people is what will be contained in the constitutional amendment. And that was the push that has been made with the BBI, that we're looking at a referendum because of constitutional amendments. Now, uh, <clears throat> when people were bringing these contentious issues and they were saying some of the opinions have not been put in, mm -hmm. it was because they want them to be fixed in and sorted out. Now, most of those issues are fundamental. There were the issues of, of, of money, how resources will be allocated to the different counties. I mean, counties which have a large landmass found, uh, found in the report stating mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they should not suddenly, that should not be a component in determining the allocation that they get. Mm -hmm. That is something that means reduce resources. Suddenly there was a component which we are putting on the newspaper today, mm -hmm. extra MP slots. And most of the counties that have low population found out they do not even get extra MP slots. So mm -hmm. they are shaved on the revenues that they will be, the money that they will be able to get in terms of a county. Mm -hmm. And they're also getting lesser representation, which they've some, made, some of them might feel they may, need more representation. And, and some women repositions were being scrapped and a representation for even marginalized people and persons with disability was out. Mm -hmm. and Nairobi was losing uh, its status as a county. So these were the fundamental issues that were at a breaking point for a lot of people. Right. And this is why people were saying we need our views incorporated into this document because once a constitutional amendment bill comes out, like mm. it will come out today, right. and then it goes through the referendum process, the train has left the station. Okay. And this is why we, wh what we are anticipating is that the moment they moved this uh, uh, launch from last week to this week, mm -hmm. it was for purposes probably of uh, uh, putting in some of the recommendations that Kenyans have put forward. Okay. And this is what we're hoping that will come out of this particular document. If it incorporates what Kenyans have been stating for the last uh, three, four weeks since mm -hmm. the document was launched, mm -hmm. we are good to go. Kenyans will have 
no problem with it. Mm. Remember, when people say that there's nothing like a contested election, I mean a contested referendum, a non-contested referendum, a non-contested referendum we are saying is this. Mm -hmm. According to the election law, the moment it is contested, you who wants to say no, you have to go and form a referendum committee mm -hmm. that is going to actually campaign for why you are saying no. It means costs. It means putting together a team. Right. What we are saying, and most people who are saying we don't want that kind of a contest, because some of these co uh, committees have to go all the way to the constituency level. So people might even end up bickering and fighting at mm. constituency level. Mm -hmm. Do we need that right now as a country? We don't. Okay. What we are saying, incorporate everything that Kenyans want. Put it in that document, mm -hmm. bring it to the masses. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, at the ballot, all they want to say is, do I think we have we need the changes in our constitution mm -hmm. or no? That should be the question. But not because we are saying some of these proposals will finna me as a taita taveta mm -hmm. and will, will, will not be uh, nini, uh, something that will help me as, as a Kenya. Mm -hmm. We should be able to put things that allow for Kenyans to feel included. That's the whole basis of BBI. Ruth, yes. um, you know, there's, uh, just on Monday, I think, uh, Right Honorable uh, Raila Odinga said that, you know, he's closed the door to discussions, and if you want to go vote no, then go vote no. Does that give you um, an expression, considering there are a lot of serious dissenting voices on this uh, particular uh, process, does it give you that the country is united um, so far going forward, and does this exercise even put it into more trouble? Um, the unity of a country is, is a, very, it's a very deep topic to discuss, you know, because when you, are, when you question whether the country is united or not, some people would ask you, is it because, you know, the unity, is, unity, um, is unity shown or displayed by there being peace? Mm -hmm. Or what, what's the indicator for a country being united, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, when we look at, uh, you know, when we look at, the, when we carefully in, in, interrogate the statement that Raila Odinga gave, that you know you have, you're free to vote no if you, if you're not happy with the, with, the, with the recommendations of the report. Yes, it's basically encouraging the spirit of choice. And you mm -hmm. know, a referendum is basically a question of you saying, you know, it's, it's a question of you saying I agree or mm -hmm. I disagree. And uh, looking at it, I mean, um, it, it, it's 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 also the question of. For how long will we collect views? You know, for how long will we will we tell? Will we allow people to come up with views and come up with and, and talk and you know incorporate everything that every Kenyan wants? Mm -hmm. As as Stephen says that you know it would have been better if we had all the views of all Kenyans incorporated into the document. Then mm -hmm. I'm I'm just trying to imagine what kind of referendum we would have in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. we would have a blotted would have a blotted uh, document that would be. I mean, you can't possibly you can't possibly please everybody. So I I honestly think that at this point. Let, let's give it a test and see whether Kenyans want this or do not want this. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. if Kenyans do not want the proposed changes, if that's the majority, because remember, democracy is all about majority having their say, you know. Mm. If, 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 if the majority feel that we do not need these changes, then the country moves on. If, okay. if, if, ma if ma majority feel that we do need the changes and vote for it, we proceed, you know. Okay. Yeah. Mark, there's uh, someone who texted in and said, you know, it doesn't really matter. There will, be, there will be a referendum whether we like it or not. Does that give you the feeling of uh, national unity? Because clearly this person has washed off their hands of this particular process and they're like, wale wanajisikia wafanyi. You, you know, let me, let me tell you something that I find very interesting. That someone sitting with their phone on Twitter can, can say they've not accessed the document. That is hilarious. Mm -hmm. There is a thing called a URL that is a direct link to downloading the, the, the BPI report. Now, if you can afford to do Twitter and you can't afford to download a, a, a 50 MB document, mm -hmm. then the problem is really you, by the way. So let's just be very clear. <laughs> I can discuss about the grandmother who only has a radio. I can discuss with the person who lives in the village and they can't access technology. Mm -hmm. But you can't tweet that you can't access the document. That's, mm -hmm. that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we... <laughs> We, 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 we have to be very, very clear as a country as to what constitutes unity. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we are acting as though the BPI is the last legislative thing we would ever do in this country. Mm -hmm. We are acting as though we can't pass other bills. We are acting as though we can't introduce motions in parliament. We are acting as if we've got one chance to vote about and, and everything. So you've got this mentality that everything must be in the BPI. We, we are slightly um, askew in our thinking as, as far as that is concerned. Mm. But number two, and this is critical, and I keep saying this because people keep missing it. Mm -hmm. The BBI is a process and it is a conversation. 
Okay. If you want peace in any circumstance, you create an environment within which people can talk. Mm -hmm. So the BBI is not the full stop to 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 uh, progression towards peace and cohesion as a country. Mm -hmm. It is a doorway towards a consistent conversation mm -hmm. because there is no peace document that has ever been inked without opposition anywhere. Look at the 2007 peace accord. Mm -hmm. We know there were hardliners. There were hardliners who were against that peace accord and, and, and the panel of eminent persons told us as much. Mm -hmm. There was William Ruto. There was Martha Karua mm -hmm. who was sitting on a hard stance, my way or the highway. Okay. Then there were the peacemakers. You understand? And that is the nature of any document. Mm -hmm. Now let us look at the regional conflicts around us. The regional conflicts around us exist because, number one, if you look at Ethiopia, right. there is no space for conversation. You look at Uganda, there is no space for conversation. You look at what recently happened in Tanzania, there is no space for conversation. But in Kenya today, I can sit and say whatever I want about the president, uh -huh. I will not be arrested. Uh -huh. uh, none of you will be taken to prison. And therefore, the ingredient for peace is not the BBI document in and of itself. Right. It is the opportunity that it opens towards conversation and continuous conversation about the country, the kind of country we want, uh -huh. the kind of citizen we want, the kind of government we want. And that conversation is is part of the reason we have peace. So even the people who are opposing BBI uh -huh. are actually then supporting the BBI process because that's how you build bridges, by conversation. Okay. Even with your friends, if you don't talk, you can never fix things. So the BBI is a process, it is a conversation, mm. it is not the be-all and end-all of conversation. Mm. So even when MPs say, oh, this is not there, tell that MP he has locus standing to go to, to, to parliament and introduce the bill. Let's okay. not act as though BBI is the last thing we will ever legislate on. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mark, for that one. I want to shift gears a bit and talk about the budget. Now, the constitution that we promulgated in 2010 apparently cost us about 10 billion uh, Kenya shillings, and we understand the projection of the IEBC as far as this BBI referendum is concerned will be about 14 billion. And uh, Stephen, I'll just ask you, 14 billion in a time whereby we are facing crisis left, right, and center, uh, country gr uh, grappling with uh, debt, we are almost being put on the international CRB, for lack of a better word. Hmm. Is this the time to be spending 14 billion? This is a hard question. And, and the, f the thing that I've mentioned before is that the president has rallied government and said government right now is focused on a constitutional moment. It's going to be impossible to say that we will not end up doing this referendum. But one thing that we should be cognizant of, in as much as we're saying we're going to put this expenditure to use, let's be cognizant of what the issues are affecting us now. Doctors and medics want to go on strike, all right? Uh, teachers want to go on strike come January. All of this is about money. We have issues about locusts which are coming and ravaging our country. Things are not working correctly. And, and as we speak, in as much as we're looking at this particular trajectory of going for constitutional changes and putting in money for referendum, let's be cognizant that we also need to fix some of the pertinent issues affecting us. Mm -hmm. The government has rightly said over the next few weeks they're looking for about 400 billion for the sake of trying to salvage the economic ravages that have come out of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. But in as much as they're going out looking for this particular money, let us try as much as possible to run this process as they have intended to do it in a manner that recognizes what are the issues affecting smaller Kenyans. Now, there are things which can be done right now as we speak, which you don't have to do complicated things. One, give money to counties. Yes. Counties are saying they have not been paid for the last three months. The, Mwanainchi, the person on the ground in their villages in Wundani, the moment a county government official has been paid his salary, mm. the moment they have received their per diems, the moment that money is being spent for, for particular development projects, money spreads around. Now, right. we can fix this by doing the things that, we, that are obligated by law right now. So if we begin to do the, the, the little things that are already in our budget system, then we can talk about the referendum. The things about PPEs, making sure that medics are given cover, medical covers and things like that, fix that. Fix that, then continue with this issue of BBI. So my call to government today is that, fine, 
We have already said that this is a constitutional moment. We've said that this is something that must proceed. You proceed with that, but take care of Kenyans and the needs that they have. Make sure that government officials from this point forward, they do not leave or abdicate their duties so that they can go campaign for BBI. Mm. Let us not see PS as saying that they are now the champions of BBI. BBI. Let them stay in office and fix the issues that are pertinent to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Let MPs also not abdicate their roles uh, of making sure that they are running CDF and things that are mattering to the Kenyans mm -hmm. for the purposes of running around to sing BBI left, right and center. Okay. The life must go on in as much as we are saying this is going on, but fix the issues that are most important to Kenyans. Do that, BBI no one will have a problem with it. Once I have food in my stomach, I'll mm -hmm. go and queue and vote for the referendum. Okay. But when we are hungry, then we might have to look at which priorities do we have as a country. Ruth, same question. 14 billion. Is it a time we should be spending 14? For me, this is more or less impulse buying for the country. <laughs> well, um, one thing that I have always held as a belief is that uh, the, the process of running the nation and the process of uniting the nation are two processes that can be run concurrently. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the biggest concern for Kenyans right now is the fact that we have we have COVID-19 here and a lot of Kenyans have been affected by the same. And the fact that even our healthcare system is not perfectly being run at the moment to be able to say that we are comfortable as a nation to proceed with the process that is before us of BBI. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to remind Kenyans that, you know, BBI is a process that began way before COVID-19 started. Mm -hmm. And as a country, we must be able, uh, our governance structure has to be able to be structured needs to be structured in such a way that whatever comes, whatever may, mm. we don't have to stop what we had started to be able to focus on, on one thing, but we can be able to run the processes concurrently. Mm -hmm. I'd like to give an example of, for instance, um, I mean, other countries that, have, that were also equally facing COVID-19, right. but had other processes, other national processes that had to continue. For example, America was also facing you know, COVID-19 just like us, mm -hmm. but that did not prevent them from you know, stopping the elections because, I mean, it was pretty much something that had been scheduled to take place. Mm. So we cannot be a country that says that just because we are facing COVID-19, we need to stop everything else, forgetting that when we started this process, we actually thought and felt that it was important for the nation that at that particular time, and still, I mean, to, till now, we still feel we might have lost the importance of this process. We might have forgotten why we got here in the first place. We might mm. even have forgotten the fact that, you know, this is a process that is meant to cure certain problems we faced each, each and every electioneering period, mm -hmm. forgetting that two years from now we actually have an election. And if we don't fix these problems, we will be facing, we will have, we will have dealt with COVID-19 only to face another problem, which is whatever occurs or, you know, the, the instability that occurs and takes place after every the elections, you know, after mm -hmm. the elections are, are done every five years. Mm -hmm. So we must remember as a country that even though we might face, you know, an abrupt changes in our governance system, we might face abrupt um, abrupt uh, conditions such as COVID-19, mm. we should not lose sight of the fact that there were problems that we were de dealing with as a country mm -hmm. and that we will still deal with as a country two years from now after if we COVID. don't, yes, after mm -hmm. COVID, if we don't fix these things. Mm -hmm. So I agree with, with, with Stephen that, you know, the country needs to find a way of how to balance all this. The country needs to find a way of how to continue running the nation as it ought to be run, but also find a way of balancing the same with uniting the country through this BBI process, if that is the intention of BBI. Okay. Yeah. Mark, the same question to you. 14 billion at a time when we have uh, unemployment and um, other issues such as locusts and we have, uh, you know, COVID-19. Is this a time to be channeling 14 billion to a process that can be done at a different time? You, you know, uh, I find the question amusing because it is similar to asking can a man chew gum and walk at the same time <laughs> this is what i mean i've had this call uh -huh. consistently that we should do nothing else uh, but focus on covid mm -hmm. so i ask myself should the bureau of statistics stop collecting statistics because we want to focus on covid uh, should the attorney general stop uh, going through the negotiations with the british and the americans and say no 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 we don't want to deal with you guys we're dealing with covid it is a political statement to say that we want to push bbi because we want to deal with covid my friend uh, the budget is written and the money for COVID is not going to be affected by the money for BPI. These two things are different. And you know, and, and this is the biggest problem with our country. We, we make very 
lazy statements without looking at the reality. Let me look at the COVID situation, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. When we say that national government should do something about doctors, mm -hmm. my question is, in the entire healthcare fraternity, mm -hmm. how many hospitals are controlled by national government? There are five. Five hospitals out of thousands. The rest of them are under, under county governments. That means doctors, nurses, orderlies, all of them are hired by county governments. Okay. Now, those county governments, some of them are doing a better job of taking care of their doctors and others are not. But now, Mark, Mark, go... Mark, Mark, let me just to, uh, hold you on that one because as much as the county governments are, have hired some of these doctors and so on and so forth, but they still say that they some, haven't received I... money. And the teachers um, are saying that they will strike in uh, January, like uh, Stephen has reminded us. We also have medics who've also issued a strike notice clearly because there's lack of money. Why don't we take this 14 billion and say, you know what, let's hold this first of all. Watch a to solve the issue in Atumiza Zaidi. Here's why I, I have contention with that. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tell me which county government was not issued with money mm -hmm. to make sure it was COVID ready. Mm -hmm. You tell me which county has not been given the resources requisite to, to meet the needs of the healthcare system. So mm -hmm. you cannot mix the two issues. And, and this is why we mislead Kenyans mm -hmm. when we say mm. that the problem with healthcare is a national government problem. It is not. Mm -hmm. And even the doctors who are going to go on demonstration, and I agree with them, mm -hmm. because what has been done to them is egregious. But we must take with the problem to where the root is. The root is we've got governors who are con people who've decided to take the money that was supposed to prepare for COVID and put it in their pockets to the detriment of our doctors. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about that. And I'm not saying that so that we excuse anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that so that if we are going to fix a problem, we've got to put the baby exactly where the, the problem is. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the education sector, mm -hmm. everybody knows mm -hmm. that, that, that Magoha has, has waxed hot and cold, and that baby <laughs> lands directly at Magoha's suite. You understand? So okay. let's put the, the burden where it is, All and right. let's not then mix BBI into that mix. Because my question is, aren't we spending money in foreign missions? Why should we say that all ambassadors should come home so that we stop spending money on foreign missions and then focus on BBI? You know, come on, we can't just pick one thing and say Mark. BBI is the one thing to pick. <laughs> Mark, um, I, I want us to have the last sentiments on this one, and I'll start with you, Stephen. Um, what, what are your final remarks in the, this whole process? One last point I have to make. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The process of getting money to do this thing is the job of Treasury and Carry. They have been falling short on their targets. Mm -hmm. Fix those targets. Make sure you collect the money that is out there. You can be able to do all these processes concurrently. Mm -hmm. So it is incumbent upon the, the Kuri attorney to look for this money. If he wants to do what the, the, the government wants to do right now to do the BBI, do that and also pay our doctors, pay mm -hmm. our teachers, mm -hmm. make sure that uh, we are make our school children, by the time they go back to school, they'll have the right infrastructure and everything is moving on track. Right. Final remarks. When it comes to this BBI process, mm -hmm. Kenyans must, you must, I'm asking you all, please read this document. Okay. The moment the Constitutional Amendment Bill is published today, let every Kenyan be given a copy of it. The government needs to proactively go on national television, mm -hmm. go on social media, actually unpack this document called mm -hmm. the Constitutional Amendment Bill, right. clause by clause and tell them when you're going to vote, these are the things that you're changing in the IBC. These are the things that you're changing in the National Police Council. These are the changes that you're doing in terms of revenue allocations for your counties and who will get what and representation. Okay. Those are the things that we need to unpack for our people. And again, let's not also be afraid mm -hmm. to say there are some items there that do not sit well with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you find that it did not sit well with yourself, go and vote no in the community. But do not force... William Ruto, do not force uh, uh, church leaders, do not force other people mm -hmm. to start a no campaign in the name of we are opposing BBI, Apana. Okay. Let people make that decision at the ballot, mm -hmm. but in the meantime, before that thing is published, I am deal hoping with the ones that can deal be with the with. ones can be dealt with. Mm -hmm. Let's find consensus. Let's mm -hmm. have a document mm -hmm. that will not put us all at a crossroad. Right. We want a document that unites us as a Kenyan. Ruth, as well, final sentiments. Uh, 30 seconds, please. 
I mean, he's been given two minutes. <laughs> but 30 anyway, seconds, yes. In, in, my, in my 30 seconds, I'd like to address the fact that I mm. have a feeling that uh, some of our national leaders are taking advantage of the fact that BBI is here mm -hmm. and, and taking advantage of the feelings that Kenyans have either for or against BBI mm. to fail to deliver on, on their duties and functions. And, and Kenyans at this point need to be very careful not to be, not to be misled by these leaders because mm -hmm. the, the thing is when you start saying that, you know, as a country here we are, we are dealing with all these issues and yet we have leaders who are mandated to, deal, to, to handle the issues that Kenyans are complaining about as a way of discrediting the BBI process, then we are missing it as a country. Mm -hmm. Let's be able as a country because we remember as a people we are to hold our leaders to account. Let's be able to hold our leaders to account as a people and, and, and be able to pinpoint where the leaders are failing as mm -hmm. opposed to to, as opposed to, 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 I mean, pushing for the stopping of a process that had already begun, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, claiming that, you know, we have issues to be dealt with, we have, we have unresolved concerns of the, of the Mwanainchi mm -hmm. that actually have leaders that have been mandated to deal with these particular concerns. Right. So my urge to the leaders who, I mean, uh, our CAS, our, our, our cabinet secretaries, our, our various governors and, and leaders who are mandated to handle these issues that Kenyans are complaining about, mm -hmm. my urge to them is that can they do their work? Okay. Uh, Mark? Uh, last words, as you talk to your leaders, young and old, in regards to the BBI process, what are your final <laughs> sentiments? <laughs> there's, there's, there's an adage uh, that says, do not be penny wise and pound foolish. 10 billion uh, shillings pales in comparison to a 2.8 trillion budget. Mm -hmm. If you want to save money, you've mm -hmm. got to do proper fiscal planning. Let's not be the kind of people who say in my house I only eat, I only drink strong tea without milk because I'm trying to save money and then at lunch we find you at Java spending 2,000 pop. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. Okay. BBI is going to cost us less mm -hmm. than what it costs us to actually restructure our fiscal policy. That's right. where the real elephant in the room is. Let's stop doing mm -hmm. these armchair economic uh, mm -hmm. uh, things and then pretending to know how economics work. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you very much, Ruth Mbogo, for joining us on this conversation today. As we um, get ready for the BBI uh, signature launch, let's take a look at what is happening at KCC. Live pictures coming from there in regards to the preparation. Like we said, it will be live on K24 across all our bulletins, so do keep it right here. Do not change the dial. As you can see there, a lot of uh, stuff going on. Seats already uh, put in place and our leaders as well. Preparing to head on there to launch this very historic moment in our country's history. We take a short break right now. However, when we come back on the other side, it's time for interactive. Having a conversation with Shiko Kaitani and, of course, uh, our host, guest host today, rather, uh, none other than Kate Rira, media personality. We will be seeing how this conversation will go down, especially on the trending stories that have happened in the last 24 hours. Do not go too far. We'll be right back. <laughs> 